Testing. Yeah. But I'm recording now. Morning, Saints. Bring greetings from Cokesbury First Baptist Church. I'm an assistant pastor, Pastor Moultrie, uh, where we reside under the pastor's overseer, uh, Pastor Stephen L. White. I just want to bring greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his blessed Sunday morning worship. Had an awesome time in Sunday school this morning and also trusting every family uh, that God is keeping you with his constant care in this pandemic. We are traveling a new path that we have not seen before, but God is still faithful. That thing tells us in Psalms 91, that he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High should abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In regards to, in spite of the protests, in spite of the pandemic situation, God is still in control. God still sit on the throne, so we want to give him honor. Also, we want to be mindful that this month, just remind all the saints, is pastoral anniversary month, and we just want to also be mindful that we will probably receive further correspondence from Sister Clark on how we will honor our pastor. We will make sure that the pandemic will not stop us from honoring the man of God for so many faithful years of service. Uh, as a matter of fact, Hebrew tells us that God is not unrighteous. We forget our labor and love that we have shown to his name. And he has been faithful on this gospel trail for a while. And many souls that came in and, and people mature and grow in the nurture of Christ under his leadership. So with that being said, uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to, if you mind, I'm just going to take my jacket off. Um, turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. The last time I had the opportunity to share was actually the last week just before the governor uh, pronounced his uh, mandate of closing down all facilities with the exception of those things that are considered to be essential. That was the third week of February. Uh, I was started, I, was, I just started initiating a series in the book of Ephesians. And what I did actually, I started in chapter three. Today, we're gonna continue, but we actually will be looking at chapter one. And we're gonna actually Lord bless our time. When I'm asking the family of Cokesbury to do this. Uh, I want you to read all six chapters. I'll be preaching the next Lord's Will during this pastoral anniversary month, the next four weeks, including this week. I want you to read in its entirety the entire book of Ephesians. It's only six chapters. Only six chapters, but this is an extraordinary book, and God has some things for us that He wants us to read and to embrace as a church body. Amen. You want to understand how the church functions, how the church operates in the grand scheme of things. And then also what I'll be doing starting today, you might receive it sometime this week, is that I'll send out a handout of the message that was previously preached. So just as someone as a study aid, so that way that we can uh, dwell in God's word together. Amen? Amen. So let's look to the Lord. We're going to be looking at specifically, we want to stress verses 3 to 14. We're not... This is this what we what we consider an introduction. The title of this message, as we go before the throne, would be possession, possession, and praise. That's chapter one. Possession, possession, and praise. Let's look to the Lord, Father. We just thank you for you, Lord, that your your marvelous sovereign grace that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your keeping power. It's through you that we live, move, and have our being. Now, Lord, as we enter into worship of your word, we pray, Father God, that your man of God, that I will uh, decrease, that, Father, that you might be given the glory and the honor that you rightfully deserve. For it's in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. 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 Saints of God, let, let me do this. Let me read our text. We want to focus today, and this is, this is extraordinary. I, I love this book. I really do. And this book is what we consider a, 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 a prison epistle. Matter of fact, it, the other uh, books that was written in the New Testament by the Apostle Paul well, was Philemon, Philippians, and Colossians. Matter of fact, many believe that Colossians was written and also delivered because Paul had the same messenger at the same time as Ephesians. And, and Paul is writing this book not only to those in Ephesus, but also believed that he wrote this book uh, to the surrounding churches in Asia Minor. What is the purpose of this book? The purpose of this book is that God is showing through the Apostle Paul of God's redemptive plan of his salvation. Otherwise, what we like to call it is the blueprint of the church. Because what God does 
through even chapter 1 to 6, he shows this dynamic of his design to restore mankind back to himself. And somehow what God does by his sovereign grace, he intertwines the church body with this redemptive plan. Amen? Amen. Today we want to look at chapter 1, but I want us to focus on, uh, think about this, saints, as you study, when you after, even after the message is preached. Spiritual blessings mm -hmm. and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, this is, uh, let's look at verse 3. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the doctrine of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasures of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us, watch this now, accepted in the beloved, amen, in whom we had the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasures, which he has purposed in himself. And he just don't stop there, because the continuation of these spiritual blessings, he says, in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in all and one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are in earth, even in him, in whom we also have attained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you have trusted, after you heard the word of truth and the gospel of your salvation, in whom, after you have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto praise of his glory. Church say amen. amen. This is the word amen. of the Lord. What God wants us to understand, Pastor Bill, why did you why did you pick those verses specifically? Deal with the spiritual blessings. Let, let me kind of give you a backdrop. When I when I was in college, high school, elementary school, middle school, the one thing I excelled in was in math and science came easy to me. But when it came up to when it came up to grammar, I stunk up the joint. And one of the things that the biggest problem I had right into my freshman year in college is when I wrote papers and my and my and my English teacher, Mrs. Quinn in high school, brought to my attention, is that I always wrote continual long sentence. Yeah. Mrs. Quinn always asked me, she said, William, why you seem like you're very very expressive with your hands. You're trying to get somewhere the stuff out of your mind on a piece of paper, but you don't stop with your sentence. It's just one long, continuous thought. She said, here, stun me, surprise me, excite me, use a period. And the reason why I share that, because in the original Greek, verses 3 to 14, when Paul was inspired to write this by the Holy Spirit, would you believe in the original Greek, not in the king's language, that verses 3 to 14 is one sentence, one sentence. Matter of fact, I believe that Paul had the Bill Moultrie syndrome. It was just nonstop. But it's impactful and exciting what God has given us. What has God given us? Well, he said that he gave us blessings, right? Spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's important. You know why? Because what God is showing Paul to give to us, even the church today, that God is showing that in order for us to live victoriously, in spite of protests, in spite of pandemic, in spite of chaos, we can still live victoriously, but it's based on how much we understand our identity, who we are. Amen. Amen. You see, even within the black families and community, we take great pride in expressing to our children, and our children's children, I know I do, of our heritage, where we come from as a people. We, are, we, are, we come from ancestors of inventors. Me and Deacon Owens, we talk about that all the time. And as a matter of fact, not only that, but I want my children and my children's children to understand who were the grandfathers and the great-grandfathers and, and those all the way back to slavery. Take pride in where you come from. But it's even more important, saints, that God wants every believer, it's paramount that every believer understands who we are in Christ. And the first chapter was written because it's instrumental as a vessel for us to 
understand how can we as believers live victoriously when every day we have to face sin when we step out the door we got to face trials tribulations testing we have to face circumstances of suffering we have to face even the nature of our own flesh how do we live those things Victoriously, You know why I would say that? Because the church of the living God, the church of Jesus Christ, is a spiritual organism. But the church, based on God said, I didn't say this, God said it. The church is to be a representation of what how heaven functions on earth. Amen. Amen. But how can that happen when I'm subjugated to the same thing that even the heathen is subjugated to? Mm -hmm. I still have to face trials. Matter of fact, Many of us, when we back in probably early January, is that we probably somewhat heard some things about the pandemic, but we had in our thought process, that's over in China. Yes, sir. Yes. But it was a whole different ball game when they started knocking on our doors. Our family members are being impacted yes. by this stuff. So how do us, I as a believer, that I'm able to represent heaven here on earth if I'm going through the same stuff that everybody else is going through? But God tells us this. He has blessed us. Now, I want to read this. Just back up, and I'm hopefully you get a chance to read this entire book. But I'll also read chapter 1. Verse 3, he said, God has blessed us, the God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly Christ, places in Christ Jesus. I want you to look at that word, and what I say, what I see in Scripture, what God is telling us is that there's a doxology. That word doxology comes from the word doxa, just real quickly. Doxa and logos, which means to speak glory or glory that speaks. And what Paul is actually saying is that as believers, we should speak glory to God. That means to exalt his name. And matter of fact, and then when you look at the word blessed, do you know that in the English language, the word that we know today as eulogy comes from the word blessing? In the Greek term, what does, what does it mean? It means to have a high opinion of someone. That's what you see at home going services, that somebody's giving a eulogy. they speaking positive things about the person who has passed on. They're exalting that person. they speak speaking them. And, Bible, and, the, and the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his saints. Yes, sir. Two things happen with blessings. Let me read this again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us. Can I say that one more time? Mm -hmm. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Two things. What Paul was saying, that as God blesses me, God commanded me that I bless him. Did y'all get that? As I bless God, God blesses me. Now there's a difference between the blessings. When God blesses, he blesses in deeds. That means that when God blesses us, is that he's given me things that change my status. But when I bless God, I bless God through words and by what I speak. You know why? Because there's nothing else that I can give God. God will never change the status of who he is. What can I give God? I can give him my life, but I can't change the status. I can't make him more holy. I can't make him more loving. He's perfect in loving. He's perfect in grace. He's perfect in his majesty. He's perfect in long suffering. He's perfect in, in agape love. So all that what God requires of me, and he doesn't have it the praise of the saints, he's commanding us that as we receive the blessings of God, we should reciprocate by giving him blessings and praises back. Matter of fact, here's your first application. Application number one is this. Right doctrine should bring about right doxology. What do you mean, Pastor Bruce? What I'm saying, that anytime God reveals to me what he has done for me, past, present, and future, my heart should always reciprocate with a praise. Mm -hmm. He says that, that he's, now watch it. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. You have the King James, that's what he says, all spiritual blessings. But guess what? I, I like when other translations say it too. Otherwise, he's saying God, can, can, can we focus on this? God blesses us with every spiritual blessing. God blesses us 
with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Think about that. That means that what God gives to me, because he's infinite, he gives me an abundance even beyond what I can ask for. And when he gives me, I will never run out. Think about it. The moment that you are saved, the moment that God saves you, you have inherited every spiritual blessing that there is. That's your invoke of praise. Am I right? Amen. That's part of your identity. God has given us blessings from heaven, and as a result, we should give them. It's something about that praise when God does something special in our life. Isn't that right, saints? Mm -hmm. About that praise. Matter of fact, Psalms 148, he says this. He says, praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord from the heaven. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all you angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Even the very creation gives him glory. Psalms 103, we know this. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Sister, can you give me a paper towel for me? So God, God responds to our praise, and we should be responsive to the very praise of God. Thank you, Pastor. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Now, here it is. Why is that important? Paul begins to explain from verse 3 what those spiritual blessings are. What they are. They're dynamic. Even though it's one long, continual sentence, God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of order. Exactly. What God is showing is that some of those blessings is highlighted by the Father. Amen. Some of those blessings, that's verses 3 to 6. Some of those blessings are highlighted by what's dispensed and worked out by the Son, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ. That's verse 7 to 11. Verses 13 and 14 are the spiritual blessings that we receive from the Holy Spirit. This is just an introduction as we get into chapter 1. Just laying down the foundation. So, now, now, we're getting a little bit closer, right? Also, what God is telling us, some of those blessings that's dispensed by the Father. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's not only the fact that the Father does it, it's by his sovereign will mm -hmm. or what he has already done in the past. Y'all with me? Exactly. Yeah. Also, some of those blessings that is dispensed by the Lord Jesus Christ is his redemptive work of salvation, what he's doing right now. So you got past, you got present. And the blessings that's dispensed by the Holy Spirit, because he tells us in chapter 14 that we're sealed to the day of redemption, and we're also, we receive an inheritance, those are blessings we're going to get in the future. If I make it clear, is that God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, they are responsible for the spiritual blessings that we get. Mm -hmm. It's the will of God, the work of the Son, mm -hmm. the witness of the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen, amen. amen. That, that, that's what you see from verses 3 to 14. Yeah. That rounds up, at least specifically in this context, the spiritual blessings that, that, that Paul speaks of. Why is this important? You know why? Remember at the very beginning we said what the book of Ephesians was for and what it was about? The book of Ephesians, it shows the dynamic of the operation and the function of the church. Amen? How the church is to grow in unity. And it's important that also as he disclosed those things, the believers should understand two of the two P's. I should understand my position in Christ and my possession. See, see, if I want God to work in my marriage, if I want God to work in my family with my children, if I want God to want, want me to be a witness, all the things that he speaks about in chapter 4, 5, and 6, husband, love your wives, and children, uh, honor your parents, and your days might be long. 
if I got if I want to be successful, even I even as I have to confront spiritual confrontation in chapter six, I gotta have a sense of identity who I belong to. Amen. Amen. I gotta know position. That's what we call positional truth. Mm. I gotta know why am I value of great value to the Father mm -hmm. and what He has done for me? Because when I embrace those things. <laughs> You say, well, Brother Bill, those are just doctrinal things. Yeah, they're doctrinal things, but when embraced by obedience, it helps me to do two things. Mm -hmm. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, he said that thanks be to God who has given us the victory. Romans chapter 8, Paul says, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Matter of fact, what, 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 what Paul does and this is probably out of our lesson today, but towards the end of chapter 1. He wants to make sure that we understand, mm -hmm. as believers, how important this truth is to everyday life. So when he tells us all the things from 3 to 14, he gives a prayer. He says, I pray that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. He said, that the eyes of your heart, King James said that your eyes might be enlightened, but the, the rhythm of Greek said that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you might understand the three things that help you to live this life with victory. He said that you might understand the hope of your calling, the glory of the riches of the inheritance of the saints, the seed and greatness of his power. Otherwise, what he's telling you, he's saying that God, when he gives you insight and knowledge and wisdom in the fullness of Jesus Christ, and we obey those things, God gives us wisdom, as he says in verse, in verse 10, he gives us wisdom and prudence to know how to handle everyday life. That's what he's praying for. Amen. Okay, time out. Can I, can I explain why? Yes, sir. Because as me, not just you, as me and you go through this series, if the only thing that I get from this study, even myself, is just an academic understanding of some theological terms, I have missed the point completely. Mm -hmm. God wants to make sure that we understand the significance of how the church can function. And it's function based on always on God's truth. Let me, now, when I was here, Back in February, and I know my time is short, but I was teaching about chapter 3. And what Paul was doing, uh, we know that the first section of Ephesians is based on doctrinal truths. The last three chapters deal with practical application. And what I was sharing with the saints, when the Holy Spirit showed me, is that when Paul prays a doxology, sometimes you hear me when I quote that when I finish preaching. Now to him who's able to do a seedling and abundantly of all we ever ask to think according to the power of the work within us. Amen. When Paul prays a prayer, then he pronounces a doxology. This is chapter three. I believe that prayer and that doxology is a bridge that joins doctrinal truth to practical application. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, many of us are Cokesbury. We are residents either of Cecil County or Hartford County, majority of us. When you agree to that, amen. amen. When you come on Route 40, there's a bridge. I think it's called Halem Bridge. Mm -hmm. That bridge links Harity Grace to Perryville. Yes, sir. And the grandest scheme of things, the bridge links really Hartford County to Cecil, to Cecil County. Yes, sir. And chapter 3, when Paul prays the prayer in chapter 3 and pronounces the doxology, that prayer, that doxology, is linking doctrine to duty. Mm -hmm. Or the second half. That, that prayer is linking spiritual wealth, or the first half, to spiritual walk in the second half. Mm -hmm. that, that prayer is, is linking the belief we should have. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going over this. Versus the behavior we should live out. Doctrinal, duty, position, practical, Belief, behavior, mm -hmm. spiritual will, spiritual walk. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because God knows that these truths, and by us gravitating who we are in Christ, is instrumental that we become vital how the church functions. Mm -hmm. See, that's when you can get to chapter 4. First thing he says in chapter 4, he says, we are to walk worthy of the vocation where we are called. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
I want to skip down to this in terms of God's blueprint as we look to see what the Father has done. The will of the Father. Uh, verse 4, he says, now watch this. We're probably going to stop here. We're, we're going to continue this next week, but I want to leave some groundwork for us to study to come back as we go through the, the spiritual blessings. Remember we said the Father, this, he dispenses the gifts or the blessings based on what happened in the past. I just want to take a quick look. What he says is this. He says, as according he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the doctrine of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasures of his will. See, God, by, by trade, I'm an I'm I'm archi architectural engineer. So what I do is that we have a design of air conditioning systems, and we draft up the blueprint. Then we have another person who's a construction administration engineer or the general contractor. They take what's on the blueprint and put it into existence to a building. And then when the building's erected, we, me and the contractors, we have to train somebody, the client staff, the user staff, how to operate and function and maintain what was built. Well, I want you to understand this morning that God the Father, he's the chief architect. He has the plan of salvation, the direction of the church of the living God. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's the field engineer. He left heaven, left glory, came to earth, right? The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He came to earth to put into effect what God has blueprinted before the foundation of the world. And then when he went back to be with his Father, he didn't leave us comfortless. He sent the Holy Spirit to do what? To facilitate and to maintain the body of Christ. Amen. Why? Amen. Because he said that we have spiritual blessings. Amen. And that word spiritual means that the Holy Spirit, he's the one by his communication, and it's through his working that we receive those gifts at salvation. Yeah. Hope that we got that. The word chosen us. We're going to end here. But God is a choosing God. In the original language, when it said that God chose, it means that God chose for himself, and God chose by himself. God didn't ask you for my opinion when it came to salvation. Matthew, he's a, he's a choosing God. Amen? Matter of fact, he tells us that, that in Deuteronomy 7, 6, Moses told the Israelites that God chose them and loved them as a nation, and they didn't do anything to gain favor of God, but God did it through his own divine prerogative. God chose a uh, uh, Levitical priesthood. He chose them for to perform the religious rites of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. That was through his own prerogative. Jesus chose 12 disciples to change the world upside down. When God chooses, because he's self-existing, mm -hmm. God chooses for his own good pleasure, yeah. but he chooses by himself. Amen. That means that God chose me. Amen. Sister said this morning in Sunday school that God chose me. In spite of what I myself, yes, sir. in spite of what I had done, yes, sir. in spite of my lying, I'm speaking about myself now, in spite of my, my conniving ways, my sinful practices, yes, God already knew that before the foundation of the world. Yes, when I was sir. dead in trespasses of sin, God still chose me. Amen. See, when God chooses me, the Bible says the reason why we send praises unto God because we understand that if I didn't choose God, he chose me. That means I can't lose my salvation. Yes, he yes. chose me. Yeah. The other thing we're done is predestination. That means that now God chose me, He directed the steps. That, means that, that word predestination means that God predetermined how I get to the cross. God didn't shoot this thing from the head, He already made that. He already thought and engineered that thing before the foundation. Well, Pastor, are you saying that man don't have no responsibility? Oh, yes, He does. I'm not saying that. We all have to give an account. What we do with the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what I'm saying that even the things we don't understand about his sovereign grace, the word of God is true. Saints, we're going to end there. Next week, we're going to look at verses 4 
the 14, the password of the Father of his sovereign will, the present work of the Son, his redemptive work, the witness of the Spirit in the divine inheritance that we receive. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Please join us in our studies as God see fit that we'll be looking at this dynamic of the church. Amen. 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 And saints, as we close out today, I would be remiss if I didn't offer the invitation for salvation. See, God engineered salvation. You know why? I give four reasons why we need a savior. I don't know who's looking on YouTube, I don't know who's watching Facebook, but if you do not have a relationship, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. If you think the pandemic and all that's taking place across the nation with protesting and think that's happened, all the chaos, if anything, hell is a far, far worse place. Mm, my God. Hell is reality, it's real. And Jesus says the place where the worm never dies, that means that you still have an eternal soul. Why in hell? Mm. You, have, you have all your senses. You have all your consciousness. It's so real that God sent his only son to die as a substitute. He paid the price for the sins I committed and you committed. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead, he didn't say you might be saved, he said you shall be saved. My God. And you can do this right now. So if a step of faith, if you want to give your life to Christ, whoever watching this, pray a prayer, and I just want to emphasize, it's not so much the prayer, it's the condition of your heart. He says with the mouth, men believe it to righteousness, he said the profession is made with the mouth, but with the heart, men believe it to righteousness. But pray something to this nature. And Matt, you can do it right now. Father, I heard Pastor Bill. And I'm not sure if I'm saved. Either I know I'm not saved, but I just don't know. And I don't want to die and not knowing. So, Father, I'm coming to you right now asking forgiveness of my sins. I believe everything that the Bible shares about your son, that he became our substitute. Now, Father, I ask. For forgiveness of my sins, Lord Jesus, I receive you right now as my Savior. Save me, Lord, from my sins. And the Lord changed my heart that I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, saints, I'm, I'm going to take a step of faith, my friend. If you pray that prayer, I'm going to give you my cell phone number right now. And I want you to either text me. And call me and say, Brother Bill, I heard the message. And I prayed that prayer. And I want somebody to talk to. My number is 443-807-6868. You can call me. You can text me. If you prayed that prayer or you have any questions, call us. I'm just not a renegade. I'm an assistant pastor here on the Pastor White. But I'm giving you permission. All hearts bow. Father, we just thank you for what we have heard from you. We pray that your spirit will glorify yourself as we give you praise for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you will do. We give you all honor and glory for it's in Jesus' name. For his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Give me a phone. All right. Yes. Give me a phone. What I'm going to do is love under Google.